it was about an hour and a half long of interviews, angles, pageantry, very similar to some of the events we've seen from the UFC over the past few years where they talk about what's upcoming and they card out the fighters and they all talk trash. And I mean, in retrospect, this worked. Everybody's talking about it today. It's the big news in wrestling. We still, still, still don't know what is going on with the WrestleMania main event. Is it going to be some one-on-one -on -one matches? Is it going to be a four-way? Is it going to be a three-way? Is it going to be a tag match and then a singles? Is it going to be some sort of tournament? What is going on in the main event? We don't know, but what we do know is that The Rock showed up. And like you said, he big-footed everybody. He big-timed everybody, slapped Cody Rhodes in the face, buried Seth Rollins on the mic, stood in front of Roman Reigns repeatedly. For better or worse, this was The Rock show in a lot of ways. What were your thoughts on how it played out, Mike? And I can, I can lend some more information as time goes on. The little clips I saw of it, they made sure to to make it look like it was a big rollicking affair, and it obviously was very loud from what the miking was. Now, it wasn't as loud as I thought it was going to be because we ended up finding out later on by way of WWE, they are saying there were about 3,400 people there. You know, if you take that number at face value... That still is not a lot of people to be put into the T-Mobile arena. When you went in there, did it look like they had it originally or set up for more people? Or did it look like they had it cordoned off where they pretty much knew what they were getting in there and they were prepared for that? The setup to me seemed to be, and I looked at the seating chart afterwards to try to get a better idea of how many people you know, they expected, but the seating looked to be about one third to half of the arena. There were a couple of sections behind the hard cam where there were no fans, but I, you said you thought there was going to be a bigger pop. It was going to be louder. It was insane inside there. The fans were going crazy back and forth before any of the superstars came out. There were dueling chants of, we want Cody. We want Rock. Rocky sucks. Cody sucks. From different sides of the arena. So, you it, you know, like in WWE, you usually have the crowd will do a dueling chant and one side will say one thing and one will say the other. Well, here, both sides were saying multiple things. So it was chaos well, the entire was time. Was it more of the case that the fans that were there were saying everything just because they love being there and they love chanting stuff and they're actually saying Cody sucks and then saying Roman sucks as well? I definitely caught a few people <laughs> saying we want we want Cody, Cody sucks. <laughs> but they were into it regardless. And they were into pretty much everybody that showed up there from the onset. Michael Cole was the first one out alongside CM Punk, who the crowd went crazy for. There was no waffling back and forth. CM Punk was over big time with the crowd, as was Big E, as was Pat McAfee. The crowd chanted all of their names. There was even a Michael Cole chant from a the Michael audience. A Michael Cole chant. Yes, there was a Michael Cole chant <laughs> from the audience. Uh, those were the hosts. They were kind of set up in the media section, I guess you could say. Uh, despite referencing it many times, CM Punk did not punch anyone in the face. Although I thought he had a good point in that he thinks Cody and Seth Rollins should have stood up for themselves more and punched back at The Rock and Roman Reigns in that main event segment. But after we got a little bit of talking from the talking heads, they showed a video package. Triple H, who will appear on SmackDown this evening, came out, and he gave a long rundown of WrestleMania history, some of the superstars who have helped build it. No mention of Vince McMahon, of course. Also, no mention of Pete Rose, who's been a star of WrestleMania many years. No mention of Doink the Clown, who once showed up and faced off against himself at WrestleMania. So some any, of the wait, luminaries. Any, any mention of Akibono? No mention of Akibono versus uh, Big Show. Uh, no. Yeah. Damn.
But uh, yeah, Triple H then said, are you ready? But first he let us know, we ain't seen nothing yet. It's a new era and we ain't seen nothing yet, which quite frankly worries me based on what we've seen recently. Then he, he got us going, are you ready? Well, you better be. And then nothing happened. <laughs> Michael, <laughs> Michael, Michael Cole, Pat McAfee went to a video package of Bianca Belair, I believe, who, of course, the crowd loved. She left. We had uh, Rhea Ripley come out, a big star. And, of course, she was cut off by Becky Lynch, who said that if Rhea Ripley can get past Nia Jax, Becky is going to take Mammy. She's going to bend her over. Mammy? Yeah. She said she's going to bend her over and teach her who's boss because that's what happens when the man comes around. Crowd loved that, as did I. <laughs> and then we had the main event segment, I guess you could call it, with Roman Reigns. He came out. He said, it's not up to Cody. It's up to me. And I'm choosing The Rock for WrestleMania. Well, actually, Seth Rollins was out there first. I apologize. I've got this mixed up. He's easy to forget about, especially the way he's been treated here by everybody I'll, recently. I will be honest. I thought he was over to a degree that I did not expect, especially live. The crowd went crazy for him. They would not stop cheering his song. And really, I thought he came out looking better at the end of this than he did going into it. Because he was the one getting in the Rock and Roman's face at the end of it, not Cody as Cody had been slapped. And Cody actually, I'd have to rule that a knockdown technically because he took a knee off those four fingers to the face from old Dwayne. But we'll cover more of the WrestleMania kickoff show when we come back on Wrestling Observer Live. Hello, Mike Sempervivi here, filthy Tom Lawler, talking about his experiences yesterday in Las Vegas, where he lives. WWE came to his city the same way the Super Bowl has come to his city. They had to actually get a pass. They had to inform Filthy Tom that they were coming to town and that it, if it was okay to have their event there. And Filthy said, yes, you can come on in. It's a flight zone for you. It's not for everybody, though. But Filthy, tell us more about this main event here because we actually got a, a, a flow chart. Uh, which I was not expecting out of The Rock, who who went and described his entire family history to us. Yeah, The Rock let us know uh, before there were shots fired that he was going to show us something really cool on the screen, is what he said. I got something really cool. That's what he said. I got something well, really cool to show you guys. Well, you, and you guys it wasn't going to be one of his movies. He's... Wow. Well, he said... You better respect it. And then they threw up a graphic of the Bloodline family tree. <laughs> they which regurgitated the graphic. I don't know, Mike. I don't know if this was knowledge to me before and I've just seemingly forgotten it. But my brain was blown when The Rock said, Our great-grandfather's took a blood oath to become family is that legally binding can you do that these guys I, are not uh, so they're not technically related by blood well their I mean, their ancestors were blood brothers well i mean what does a blood oath consist of i need it, more information well i mean it's usually the the slicing of a of a hand or something, and then th that together, you know? It's apparently what, what Jack Briscoe says that Ole Anderson tried to do to him to keep Georgia Championship Wrestling together, and uh, I don't know if I can actually say in our politically correct age what Jack Briscoe's response to the Polish Ole Anderson was, but uh, suffice to say he was uh, not down with it. Well the Mayavia and Anawaii families were down with it because now we have the bloodline. And as you said, the rock threw that graphic up. The crowd went mild at best, which <laughs> That's I believe good. was the, well, I, I think in some ways it was the intended reaction. Aye. There's no way with the delivery he gave that he expected the crowd to cheer 
this graphic when it was thrown up there. This, of course, leads to Cody Rhodes coming out because the bloodline is not the only royal family, as The Rock and Roman Reigns have said now many times. Cody Rhodes came out. Oh, I thought you were going to say Robert Fuller. No, you got to... It's too old of a reference, isn't it? I apologize. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, Cody... Cody comes out. He says that their ancestors would have been ashamed if they could see them right now. The Rock slaps him. I've, I've got the timeline all mixed up because prior to this, Cody came out. And what he said was, I've got a choice to make. And for WrestleMania, I choose Roman Reigns. So we now had Roman Reigns choose The Rock. Cody choose Roman Reigns. We don't know what's going on. Cody. Do they know what's that, going on? Sorry. I don't know that they need to right now. I guess not. <laughs> Enough we... people are seemingly invested in it and making up excuses for the lack of a coherent storyline right now. So, hey, I mean, it's not it, it. It's getting buzz, which is what it was intended to do. So Cody says that he wants Roman Reigns. He says that their ancestors would be ashamed. And then The Rock, if you look at the picture of The Rock connecting with this slap on Cody's face, The Rock's hand is about the same size as poor Cody's head, seemingly. Four fingers to the side of the jaw. Cody takes a knee. Triple H and the staff get in his way. Seth Rollins, who's injured, may I mind you, has to stand up for not only Cody Rhodes, but also himself as he had been eviscerated, buried by The Rock and Roman Reigns. had been called the B-team multiple times, the loser squad by the Bloodline members. And now, after the live action, we were left with no answers, seemingly. And... Michael Cole, CM Punk, Big E, Pat McAfee, they wrapped it up at the desk. And then we went backstage for one more question for Triple H. And, you know, before he could really give much of an answer, The Rock and Roman Reigns come into frame, along with Paul Heyman. The Rock is so large that at many times you can't see where Roman Reigns is. I don't know if this is by design I don't know if this is happenstance, but The Rock, certainly in the foreground, he's he black-adamed Roman right out of the picture. <laughs> and he says, if Cody talks that ish about our family again, I'll slap the freaking taste out of his mouth something to that effect it was bleeped out apparently if you check my ex my twitter at filthy tom lawler you can find some of the only unedited footage of this promo as a real broadcast journalist would provide and uh that was essentially the end of the kickoff show mike was there a mad rush to get out of there, or uh, did, did it look like a lot of people spent the $2,500 or whatever it was to to get their their 14 karat gold lanyard or whatever it is and have a drink and a conversation with Triple H? There was a mad rush by me to get out of there. That's I'll it. tell you that much. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.